Welcome to This is Purdue. We have very special guests here today. If you don't mind just all introducing yourselves. My name is Jenny Smith. I'm the mother of Braden Smith. My name is Lotus First. I'm the mother of Caleb First. And I'm Gary First, Caleb's dad. Okay, so we'll take it way back, kick things off with how did your sons both start their basketball journeys? So Braden started playing basketball in second grade. Um, and it just has kind of evolved over the years. I wouldn't say that it was a glamorous start by any stretch, um, but certainly as he got older, enjoyed the game more and more. His dad and I both really had hoped that he would love basketball as we loved it. Um, I don't know that it was instant love for him, but he, it's, he certainly grew into it um, and he just has been playing ever since. Caleb also started in second grade. Uh, we were actually, he was playing flag football when a basketball coach in Fort Wayne noticed him and noticed his height because he was at that time substantially taller than all the other kids and actually approached us and wanted him to play with his travel team. And we were kind of like, well, I, we, we responded, we're a baseball family. We, did, <laughs> we had no desire for that, but it just kind of went from there. When did you all know and when did your sons know, I want to play basketball in college? So I'll take this on behalf of Caleb, uh, probably about the seventh or eighth grade oh, wow. uh, is when he really thought that he would have the ability to play at the next level. And just to kind of dovetail on what Lotus said, probably one of the best things, he had size, but he started getting skill. And I just remember his AAU coach and high school coach had indicated the good thing about him is he was teachable because he didn't have a lot of skill necessarily growing up and he would just soak it up and be a sponge. and and that really helped him kind of move to the next level. I would definitely say by middle school, he had decided that it was his love. Um, probably much like Caleb, Braden played football and um, baseball as a younger kid. And, you know, I think as you start to play the game of basketball, you kind of have to commit to it almost year round now. Right. So we, he had to make some decisions, you know, do I want to keep playing travel baseball? Do I want to do football in the fall and, and, you know, have all of those workouts? Or do I just want to kind of start committing myself to this? And I think he made that decision, and we really didn't look back from that point on. But he, so he, he stopped the baseball, stopped the football, and you know, here we are. Okay, so Purdue, was it always your son's dreams to come play here? What was that decision-making process like? So we're both from Michigan, so okay. up, but he grew up in the state of Indiana. So we never really pointed him towards any particular school. Um, Purdue was Caleb's first offer, and uh, Painter came and watched him a lot. I would say I noticed him kind of gravitating towards Purdue when we come here on visits. And he just like had a different look on his face yeah. when he would be here and watch Open Gym or sit in Mackey especially and watch the games. I just, there was just more of a look like, like I really like this place. You know, I think for Braden, it was really different. He didn't have that kind of interest early on. And so Purdue happened very fast. Um, it was, I'm gonna call it a short courtship. It was all about fit for me. Right. Um, it, my husband and I both played in college. And so we understood the value of it being the right fit more than the biggest offer, sure. if you will. And I had no idea how Braden's game would transfer at this level, now that we're here and we're in, in the system and in the program and the more we've gotten to know the coaching staff, I, could, I couldn't pick a better place. Um, you know, Not to say that you know he couldn't have done well other places, but it certainly has been a good fit. Do you all have any pregame rituals? Maybe it's carried over from high school? I mean, I don't think we do. I don't, but Lotus really loves shoes. And so she's very tactical about the shoes she wears for games. Okay. And I'm probably going to get elbowed here for saying that, but it's true. How, what are, okay, so we've got this gold and black pair. Uh -huh. Do you have a couple I've, others? <laughs> uh, I have a few. And let's just say I have a gold pair that was my favorite. I thought they were my lucky shoes. You will not see those again oh. because I wore those to the IU game and oh, Maryland. So yeah. they're, they're okay. done for okay. the year. Okay, maybe in the tournament bring them back? Nope, uh, nope, 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 okay. nope, next All year. Right. We'll try again next year. <laughs> so how do you support your sons? It's like the rigorous Purdue academics, friends, family, playing basketball, and all, like on this elite stage. How do you guys, you know, help support them? I mean, we're very faith-based, so I would say through prayer. I mean, we pray for him a lot and tell him that we're praying for him a lot and just tell him that his main focus should just be 
playing for an audience of one and honoring the Lord. So, yeah, just to supplement that a little bit, um, I, I just try to encourage Caleb. Uh, the last thing I think he probably needs, while I know it's the last thing he needs, is another basketball coach. Right. Um, so, if anything, I just try to encourage him and just, like Lotus said, just remind him that basketball is what he does, but that's not who he is. And that doesn't mean he should shouldn't play any harder. In fact, it should add purpose to everything he does and that he should do it with excellence and grit and resilient. And uh, the thing that I think I probably tried to instill in him more than anything is just to persevere and just to play with uh, joy. He gets to play a game that less than 1% of high school kids will ever get to play right. at, at this level. So don't take anything for granted and um, just keep your eye on the things that matter most. That's awesome. What about you all for Braden? Yeah, similarly, I mean, obviously, more than anything else, I think we just tell him to stay in the moment, um, just to be present, always. I think, you know, it's like they've said, to piggyback off that, these kids um, are so fortunate, and what a blessing, right? Through the good and the bad, like I always remind Braden, there's thousands and thousands of kids, even on these bad days, that would kill to be in, the, in your shoes. Don't ever forget that. Um, and, you know, we encourage him just to stay off social media, yeah. The people that you need to be concerned about are the people that are surrounding you. What is a favorite memory so far from this season? Well, I guess I'd have to say Portland. How do you not say oh, Portland? <laughs> Absolutely. That, I mean, that was, no one expected anything from our team. Nothing. I mean, they didn't expect us to go out there and sweep it. And it, it, it was just unreal. That was an unreal experience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from a basketball world, like to experience what we got to experience. And for us being rookies, like that's the first, that right. was the first experience we had here. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it was, um, it was, it was great on a lot of levels for the boys, just from being able to be around the families and really getting to meet them for the first time for us. Right. That was awesome. Um, so that maybe this year has been the most memorable thing, but I'm sure we're going to make a lot more memories. So along those lines, you know, it's been a historic season been ranked number one you kind of said we were the underdogs going into this right how how has that felt as you support your sons as you have this basketball community within all the parents I mean it's it's just the whole thing's been special I remember um it was probably sometime in December you know when we first got ranked number one and I was talking to Caleb on the phone and he was just talking to me about like how what a special year it it's already been and just how you know when they graduate and they move on and the ball stops bouncing in life they're going to remember this team and just what they have accomplished what is coach painter's leadership meant to you all as a family so you know i think as a parent you're sending your kid away to be with someone who you know they're going to spend an enormous amount of time with right so right. you you want them to be instilling great things into your kid um and obviously this has been sh it's been short so far but what we've experienced is honesty, transparency, um, accountability. And I don't know, like me, just being coming from a coaching world and being around sports our whole lives, those are the things that you hope your, your kid finds. Someone who, and, and, and I think he pours into those kids. He really does believe in them. If you watch Paint's, Paint, or his press conferences post game, you know, when, when we're asked about shooting slumps or we're asked about turnovers or, or we're asked about just poor decisions, my son specifically, made down the stretch, you know, Paint never falters in his belief in the kids right. um, and how he pours into them in that way. And that's not lost on our kids at all. You know, I think that when your coach has that level of confidence in you, how can you not believe in yourself? Right. So from that regard, it's been really special. And the assistant's do an awesome job, too. Okay, so two years of Coach Painter and his team for you all. What, is, what does that leadership mean to you? Yeah, I'll take it, and Lotus can kind of end it. Um, just like what Jenny said, he's been very consistent uh, throughout the entire recruiting process. What we saw is what we got. Um, he was very honest that everything is going to be earned. Uh, and after a while, just through my recruiting process, everybody started to sound the same because they would often tell you what you wanted to hear. Right. And I think the thing that was really instrumental in Caleb's recruitment was not only did he get to know Coach Paint and some of the assistants, and we had a kind of a revolving door of assistants because he's really great great at boomeranging talent. Well, hopefully boomerang and maybe they'll come back to him. But um, he learned a lot from the guys. He would walk away from here and there was a theme of consistency amongst all the guys that he got to know that who Coach Paint says he is, is really who he is. 
I'm, I'm confident that Caleb will take this relationship to the next level. For us personally, too, our Caleb's high school coach, Coach Mark Davidson, knew Coach Payne. Painter and uh, Mark knew each other because they played overseas in some sort of tournament one summer together. Um, but uh, Mark was just a huge influence on Caleb. Um, he's passed away last year. Um, but just really not even in the game of basketball, like between the lines, but just how to live as a man off the court. Um, and just really huge in um, kind of directing his recruitment. I, there was coaches he steered us towards and coaches he may have steered us a little bit away from because he played at Illinois. So this was not a new thing to him, the whole recruitment thing. Um, and then just going back to what you had asked about Coach Painter, and um, I will say a lot of people have asked me after Caleb's here at Purdue about if what we heard during recruitment actually held true. Like, right. you know, did we get what we thought we were getting? And I have told everybody we have gotten exactly what we were told. Like, Painter never made any promises and was always upfront and direct, and everything that he said has been what it has been. What would you say, you know, this this Boilermaker spirit and community, whether it's in Mackey or in Portland or at Michigan State or at IU, you know, what is what does that mean to you all when you're watching that and experiencing that firsthand? I'll take a shot at it. Um, I think this team in particular has each other's backs and um, they're there to support each other. They're there to push each other up. They're just there to there. There's a brotherhood there. There's a sense of family. And um, that's through thick and thin. And I, there's been a lot of peak moments that we've talked about, but there's been valley moments too. Right. And uh, you don't have peaks without valleys is one of the things I often say. And it's just great to see, you know, the guys have each other's backs and just continue to encourage each other. Because it's just a matter of time before you're in a ditch and then maybe you're going to be on a valley. But I think they get it. They truly care about each other. They play for a bigger purpose. And uh, I, I think our... Our stats show it's an unselfish team overall, too, which is great, yeah. great to see. Yeah. And I will say, because um, I do go on more of the road trips, and it, it's really neat how many Purdue fans show up at various locations and how loud they are. <laughs> I mean, there have been some moments where they've been extremely loud. Yeah. I would say, um, obviously, the parents on that, on that front, it's a part of the experience for us, too, right? So you know, how special it, it is that the parents do enjoy each other and do want to be around one another. Um, and, and they can, you know, they're on the journey to this whole thing. We're all in this together. And to piggyback off what Gary said, there's there's no doubt that the chemistry that this team has is unique. Um, and especially at this level, you know, everyone is special. Everyone has gifts. Everyone is uber talented. And for and that's a testament to paint too for him to be able to put together you know this group of boys where it meshes and it works and and they're all they are they all are out there playing for one another um i think it makes it so much more enjoyable for the boys and for the parents um so it, it has been unique in that regard for sure Braden recently had his number retired at westfield high school you told me earlier you work at westfield i do what did that mean to you all as family? So I don't know if you know about Westfield. Um, Westfield boys basketball has not always been um, at the pinnacle of basketball. So they'd never won a sectional title ever. Um, never had an Indiana All-Star. So um, I've been at Westfield for 14 years. Um, I was the girls coach and um, I'm an athletic director there. So sports is kind of just what we do. It's yeah. all day. We're, we're live, we smell like the school, I always say. <laughs> that is our house smell. Um, but so to watch our community and our school support, not just Braden, but those boys in the way that they did um, was special. And, you know, I think there are a lot of people who win sectionals all the time. And, and I'm not, not to say that it doesn't mean anything or that it's not as special. But when you do something for the very first time um, that has not been done before in a place, I think, you know, that says something about you what you've done um and the people that are around you and so it was a really great group of kids much like this team here they all liked each other they cared about each other there were no individuals um and they just did something really special and so when shane the coach decided that was something that he wanted to do i initially said that i felt like it was excessive um you know that it wasn't necessary um 
but you know he just shared you know Jenny this Braden has set a standard for kids here now yeah. so you know our hope is that there are many more Indiana All-Stars to come many more Mr. Basketballs I know I've got an 11 year old that don't don't worry guys I mean he's gonna break every record Braden ever had because he's already better than Braden just ask him of course so he better come um, to Purdue though <laughs> yeah so it's been really fun to watch just the community and the little kids and just what it has done for them and the excitement that is now around boys basketball so for nothing else other than just raising the excitement level, like it, it truly has been special. For all of our listeners, people watching on YouTube, what what's a typical day in the life? You know, we're here before the Ohio State game. What's it like to be the mom of a player, you know, game day? It's exciting, it's fun. Um, you know, we look forward to game day. I love getting up, getting up here. Um, you know, we try to come early if we can, grab a, grab a bite to eat somewhere and walk over. Obviously, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. There's always gonna be that level of, gosh, I just hope he does well. You know, I think sometimes people forget they are just kids. Yeah. And when they don't do well and they fail, I mean, they're failing on national television. So like you just, you hope so much that they just do well and that they, that they perform well. Um, so, but more than anything else, it's just exciting. Um, and again, just like we tell Braden, like I, start, I try to stay present too. Like I want to soak it all up. I don't wanna miss a moment of it. That's awesome. For you. Um, I would just agree with everything Jenny said. Um, like he said, you know, like less than 1%. Well, we're, as parents, we're also getting that like yeah. blessing of like, wow, this is really special. I mean, our kid is getting to do his dream and we get to be along for the ride yeah. and very present. So we try not to miss anything. I mean, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, you know, I'm tired. I'm, I think it was like last week I woke up and I was tired, but I was like, oh, it's game day. <laughs> like, and like, you know, that just adds like a, level of excitement as a parent I do appreciate our fans I do appreciate the support that they show the boys I mean I, you know obviously they do it because they love just Purdue in general I'm sure um, but it is it's it's special to be able to be a part of it and, and I'm thankful that we get to to be along for this journey also I agree 100 percent I mean it's just it's a special team it's a special place and Mackie is super special absolutely well we can't thank you enough for your time enjoy the game